Right, hey guys, it's Weston here. So today we're going to be reviewing the Wiley Fox Spark. Now, the Spark is the second series of phones from Wiley Fox. Uh, the first generation was the Swift and the Storm, which were decent phones, but can this year's Spark range be any better? So the one I'm looking at is the base model, which is under £100. So let's see if it's made any improvements over last year's models. But before I do that, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Wiley Fox for sending me this out to review. So there has been a few changes in terms of design now from the swift last year you can see that it had a circular earpiece whereas this one's got a oblong shaped one and it's got a uh, really nice orangey bronze accent to it and I just think it's a really nice touch to the design you've also got your front facing camera and all your sensors in the center we've got a 5 inch display which has 2.5D Dragon Tower glass, which is like similar to Gorilla Glass, but not as expensive. Getting down to the bottom of the phone, you can see there's a very large bottom chain. Unfortunately, there's no off-screen buttons, so I don't really understand why it's so big. On the right side, we've got your single semi-gloss power button, which actually feels pretty decent. The left side houses the volume rocker, again, the same finish as the power button and feels pretty decent. On the top, we've got your three and a half mil jack. And you can also see the three layer sandwich design so you can see the display, the frame and also the back cover. On the bottom, on the left side, we've got your primary and only microphone. And on the right side, we've got your USB for charging. So on the back, we can see a few changes as well. So the first thing I really liked about the Swift last year was the camera module. And it had a really nice uh, orangey bronze accent like is common with Wiley Fox phones. This year, you're just getting a sort of glossy black surround. It is pretty nice, but it's not as premium looking as on the Swift. You also got a single camera flash as well. Going down into the middle, we've got the same Wiley Fox emblem, which I think is really nice. We've also got the same sandstone finish, which was really nice on the Swift and is equally as nice on the Spark. You've also got the same branding. However, on the Spark, you've got a rear firing speaker, which is the same as the Storm. You've also got a removable back cover, which gives you access to your SD expansion and two micro SIM card slots and also your battery as well, which is removable. So in the hand, the phone feels pretty nice as well. Like the Swift from last year, it feels pretty decent. So in the hand, it measures in at 143 millimeters tall, 70.4 wide and 8.65 thick so it's not a massive phone it's actually pretty nice in the hand i have average size hands and it is really easy for me to use one-handed the phone is also not that heavy either coming in at 134 gram so yeah it's actually a pretty nice feeling phone the sandstone is nice and grippy and like the swift from last year it feels pretty reassuring in the hand build quality is about the same as the swift so no real improvements have made there but it is a cheaper device than the swift was last year then we get onto the display which is five inches it's 720p and it has a pixel density of 294 ppi now the colors and stuff are pretty decent they're not over vibrant they're not over saturated and they're fairly neutral. Some people have said that it's lacking a little bit of these. I think it looks fairly decent. It's uh, pretty neutral and not too in your face. Viewing angles are also pretty decent as well. Like the Swift last year that had pretty good viewing angles and it's the same here. You're not getting any color distortion or color shifting or anything like that. So it's a pretty decent display. So looking at photos, they look pretty nice and accurate. They're not too, like I said, overblown with saturation or contrast. And they look pretty accurate to what they were when they were actually taken so although there's not been any massive improvements with the display it's not got any worse on this cheaper device you also get new things like live display which has a day and night mode so if you use the phone a lot in the day or if you use it at night you can switch between these two modes to make it more comfortable for your eyes you also got a basic color calibrator and double tap to wake which you didn't have last year So now we get on to the UI, and this is running Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. And it also has Cyanogen Mod 13 overlaid on top of it. Now, from what I've seen and what I remember from the Swift, not much has really changed. In terms of visuals, it looks pretty much identical to CM12. So yeah, I can't really say there's that much difference between the two. The UI is still really nice. It still looks like stock android apart from it's got a few little flourishes here and there that make it different from stock android so visually there's not that much difference 
it's got the same home screen, it's got the same pull up menu which allows you to customise your home screen. So yeah, there's not actually that much difference. It's got the same app drawer too, which is a vertical scroller. And you've also got the really cool thing at the bottom where you can swipe to search for your apps. Uh, new additions to this are things like Now On Tap. You'll have probably seen that from other Marshmallow videos, and that's just a really cool feature to have. You've also got another cool feature as well, and that is double pressing the power button to launch the camera, which is something new as well. But other than that, not much has changed. So now we get onto one major issue I've been having with this, and that is in the YouTube app. Now, I don't know if anyone else has been having these problems with this phone, but every time I watch YouTube saying 720p, the image is really cropped in, and you can see on the screen now this happening. So when you drop the resolution, the screen goes back to normal, but then sometimes it'll change back to say 480p, and then it'll recrop it again, and you can't see what's actually happening. I'm not sure why this is happening at all. Maybe it'll get fixed in a software update, but it's just something really annoying that I did notice during my use. So now we get on to performance and it's a mixed bag again. So if you want to see a more in-depth look at performance then check the video in the card and that'll just give you a rundown of all the benchmarks and stuff like that. So this phone is packing a MediaTek MT675 which is clocked at 1.5 GHz. It's got a Mali T720 GPU, 1 GB of RAM, 8 GB of storage with 3.6 GB usable. Luckily though it is expandable. So the UI is, for the most part, pretty smooth. Sometimes you do get the occasional slowdown because it's only got the one gig of RAM. And I have noticed sometimes switching between the home screen and the app drawer, there's a little bit of delay and a little bit of lag sometimes. It's nothing major, but it's just something I did notice. In-app performance is really quite sluggish as well. Sometimes in Twitter, it takes a long time for it to catch up to when you're actually swiping. It's the same with Google Plus and Instagram as well. RAM management is also a pretty bad issue. With it only having one gig of RAM, it's not actually storing that much in the RAM's memory. So when you've got apps open, sometimes it'll actually forget and it'll have to reload the app. And multitasking isn't that great either because like I said, it's only got that like one gig. So you can't keep too many apps open, otherwise you're gonna get a really big hit to your performance. Gaming performance is actually pretty admirable. It's not spectacular, but it's nothing terrible either. I mean, it will play games like Stack, Angry Birds 2, and it'll even play Asphalt 8 at high settings. Now, bear in mind that's only at 720p, but you're still getting some decent gaming performance. Also, it doesn't get hot while gaming either, so you can game for uh, quite a long time. Just remember to not have tons of apps running in the background, because obviously that will impede performance. Moving on to battery life next, and this has, like I said, a 2,200 milliamp hour battery, which is user removable. And I was getting comfortably one and a half to two days use, and that is sort of light to medium use. So we're talking emails, social media, a bit of gaming, a bit of YouTube, a bit of music. And with that, we're getting around five hours screen on time, which I think is pretty respectable for a phone at this price. Now, if you use the phone more often, obviously that's going to have a big impact on the battery life, but I still think it's pretty impressive. Next up we get onto the camera and it's again it's a mixed bag. Outdoors if you've got decent lighting you can get some pretty impressive shots, they're really nice in colours, the quality is pretty nice as well and fairly nice in detail. If you've got poor lighting then obviously it's going to degrade pretty badly. Indoors is where it struggles mostly and you can see in some low light situations you're getting these really horrible artifacts which is just not nice at all. The flash doesn't help either and that just makes things kind of worse in my opinion. So if you want to see more about the camera then check the card or the description for the video. And finally we get on to the audio. Now the 3.5mm jack produces some decent quality audio and it's actually sort of akin to the Swift from last year. The only thing I have noticed though is it's really quiet. Now I'm not driving massively demanding headphones or earphones but the audio is really quiet. Good quality but just very quiet so keep that in mind. You've also got the app which you can uh, adjust the EQ and boost it a bit so you can get a bit of a performance increase there but it's still not amazing in terms of actual volume output. The speaker is not that great either, the quality is not fantastic. Again, it's really quiet and sometimes it's hard to it's hard to hear it. Uh, so I've noticed when I was watching some YouTube videos, I was having to turn it up to full just to hear what was being said. So now we get on to the verdict. So all in all, I think it's 
it's a decent phone. I mean, it's nothing spectacular, but it's not terrible either. Uh, the design and build remain pretty similar to the Swift, which is pretty decent. The screen again is okay. It's not fantastic, but it's not terrible either. Performance has its issues. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's really bad, depending on what apps and stuff you're using. Battery life is pretty good. Camera, in good conditions. Again, it's pretty decent. So it's certainly not the best phone you can pick up at this price, but I don't think it's the worst either. The Swift, in my opinion, is still probably the better option. It's around the same price as this now when it has an extra gig of RAM, it's got better camera, and just it's an overall better phone, in my opinion. Right, guys, so that is pretty much it for this review. If you've got any questions, uh, drop them down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all on the very next one.